Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible Study Podcast. As always, make sure to subscribe and to share and to support. You can subscribe wherever you're hearing this, be it YouTube, Transistor, Anchor, Google, Apple, or other nether regions that I'm unaware of. And once you do that, if you rate it in whatever your rating apparatus is, you will make sure that more hears, more ears will hear the word of life from God. You can share the very words of God that you hear read aloud and recited by his bond servant, by me, Deacon Henoch. And you can support at patreon.com slash aksum. That's a new slash. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash A-K-S-U-M. Today, we continue through the scroll addressed to the people of Rome, otherwise known as Romans. We are in chapter 7, and we are reading from the KJV to avoid those pesky IP trolls. Verses 1 to 6. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the Torah, how that the Torah hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the Torah to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the Torah of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that Torah, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the Torah by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the Torah did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the Torah, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. The Torah is the master as long as we live and breathe. This is wonderful parable of adultery that is given. And when you are duty bound and when you are not duty bound. And this parable is to illustrate a teaching. And that teaching is that you are no longer with your dead spouse. You are now with your living and new spouse who is not a generic spouse, but a bridegroom, a husband, the Lord Jesus. You are released from the letter of the law, from the written code, from grammar Nazis, so that you can be in bond servitude to the new spirit, the spirit of Jesus. As the old adage goes, out of the frying pan and into the fire. And if you go to a little bit more archaic English, you'll go out of the frying pan fire and into the fire. I like that because there's more fire. You have to understand that it's not going to be easier, but it's going to be harder. It's going to be more difficult but that you should gain more pleasure out of that because your new master is worthy and you should be pleased 
to serve him. Verses 7 through 12. What shall we say then? Is the Torah sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the Torah, for I had not known lust except the Torah had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, rotten me all manner of conspicuousness, concupiscence. For without the law, without the Torah, sin was dead. For I was alive without the Torah once, but when the commandment came, Sin revived and I died, and the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherever the Torah is holy, wherefore the Torah is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. So the Torah the teaching, the nomos, the law, is not sin. But it is a mirror. It is not a telescope. It is not a pair of binoculars. But it is a mirror that shows and reveals our own sins to our own eyes and to the own eyes of our heart. And no one can follow it completely. No one can follow it perfectly. And thus all who try to do so are exposed as phonies, are exposed as zombies, or as the walking dead. And so what is the solution? Well, we haven't gotten to the solution yet. So we have to keep on reading, and we have to keep on hearing. Verses 13 through 20. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the Torah, that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. There's this great square called Confusion Adababai in Ethiopia. And as you could tell from the name, it's an intersection where there are about six or five or seven, God knows, paths, sundry paths that arrive at, at one location. And there's usually some traffic police officer there to guide you because it is a confusion square. You don't know where to go. You don't know which way is left, right, up, down, north, south, east, or west. Thankfully, hopefully you still have your moral compass about you to point you to the will of God in those moments and to try to seek it. And our life is a sort of a confusion adababai or confusion square. There is a will that we have to do good, but there is not always the deed of do-gooding. We are not always the do-gooders that we wish and we will. I'm sorry to Schopenhauer, but the will only goes so far. And if I'm apologizing to Schopenhauer, it's also an apology to Nietzsche. Verses 21 to the end. I find then a Torah, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the Torah of God after the inward man. 
but I see another Torah in my members, warring against the Torah of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the Torah of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the Torah of God. But with the flesh, the Torah of sin. Now that's not a great note. We hear the Apostle Paul calling himself a wretched man, a slave or a bondservant of sin. And nonetheless, he relatively ends with thanksgiving, but the last piece is actually on the word sin here in the KJV. But recall that the original scroll of Romans is an epistle, is a letter to be read aloud and recited as we're doing today, except not in chopped up pieces, but in its entirety, all 16 chapters, all at once, in one go, in one sitting, maybe with a little breath to the side like the chocolate rain man, or maybe with a little bit of a glass of water, or perhaps even a little wine if the stomach is sick. But the original Romans has no chapters, no verses, just an ancient Greek text to be read aloud by an elite whose job it is to read aloud publicly to the people. So I encourage you to keep hearing and hopefully one day we will listen. Glory to God for all things.